What's going on, everybody? My name is Season, and welcome back to another video. And today, guys, today we're getting into settlement patterns and survey methods. So we've been getting into agriculture a little bit, and you know areas where agriculture is, and now we're going to be getting into uh, a decent amount of rural areas. Uh, how agriculture influences settlement, and then of course survey methods of those areas where the settlement has happened. Let's go. So. Before I get into this, we have three pictures on the screen. There's A, B, and C. Now, which of the following is a rural area? Uh, more than one can be a rural area as well. So, uh, think in your head for like the next five seconds, which of the following is a rural area? Okay. This is a trick question. All of them are rural areas. Now, there are different settlement practices in these rural areas. So picture A, this square on the right, let me actually turn on this laser pointer, I haven't used this yet. Oh, this is cool. So, uh, settlement A, right here, we see the A here. Uh, this is dispersed settlement. Uh, we don't see everything clumped together. Of course, we see clumps over here and a little bit right here, but the whole, like, you know, town, the rural area isn't, no clumped together, and then we see grass and mountains. We see, you know, we see space in between our, our houses, our infrastructure. We can see houses all the way back here, kind of on this hill, that are probably still part of this, like, you know, town area. The road connects and all of that. So, that's going to be kind of a dispersed settlement. Uh, there we go to picture B, the circle right here. We can kind of see everyone's kind of down the main road. They're in a straight line. This is a linear settlement. So just like a linear line on a graph, uh, there's going to be pretty much kind of like a straight line uh, in a linear settlement, maybe along a main road or a river. And then we got a clustered settlement. This is pretty much the whole town, actually, right here in this picture. Um, so we see a clustered settlement. We see all of the buildings for our uh, rural area in one little area. And then we don't see really anything else besides, you know, grass and other environments. Because uh, it's all clustered together. It's why it's a clustered settlement. So clustered settlement is going to be the opposite of dispersed settlement. All right, I'm going to turn that laser pointer off now. Uh... How do I do that? There we go. Now let's get into some more stuff. So, specific agricultural practices shape different rural land use patterns. So, that linear area, there could be agricultural practices in people's backyards. It could be farmland all around it. So, we have that one strip of, uh, what's it called? Infrastructure and buildings and civilization because there's just a bunch of farming uh, around there. For agriculture or in that clustered uh what's it called <laughs> rural area there could be a bunch of farmland around there that clusters it together and rural survey methods are used to describe land so different survey methods are different used differently to describe land or to reference them or coincide them blah 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 blah, blah. and the three ones we're going to go over is meets and bounds township and range and long lots Let's get started with meets and bounds, which is basically a system to describe land using meets, which is like your lines and directions. Most of the time, it's going to be a straight line. And bounds, which are geographic features. Uh, these don't necessarily have to be a tree or river. This could be like a barn if you're in a rural area. I know there's a lot of farming and stuff in rural areas. So it could be like, go straight past the red barn or past the small barn. At the square, no, at the triangle house, take a left. Um, or at a big hill. Uh, take a right. You're take. You're using a direction. You're going right. It's not saying go 45 degrees or 90. De not 90 degrees is a straight line. It's not saying you know go 45 degrees or do a zigzag or something like that. We generally see straight lines. Now that doesn't only mean we're gonna get just straight lines. We're gonna see a mix of other lines as well, other directions. Uh, but so the thing about meets and bounds is that they always bound to a geographic, uh, feature in that rural area. And we have a picture here of a meet and bound. So we see using landmarks, which is basically using meet and bounds, and we see using a compass. So if you're at, uh, let's get that laser pointer back up, actually. So you're at the rock right here. They could say, go down to the oak tree and take a right. Uh, so if they said that earlier, they could have said, go 35 degrees uh, west. Or, no, yeah, 30, yeah, go 35 degrees west. 
uh, and then take a turn at, uh, 50 degrees north, or, I literally can't read this for some reason, uh, but you know what I'm seeing, and it all coincides with kind of like water right here, so you got the rock in the water, say, all right, take a ride the oak tree, that's meets and bounds, if you're using numbers, like, turn 35 degrees, or go 50 feet, it's not meets and bounds. Now we got township and range, which kind of does use numbers. It's a grid system uh, to describe an area and corresponds to latitude and longitude. And this blue line right here that we have is called the baseline. And then we got the principal meridian. These people who made the image and spell meridian right. Take that. I don't have any grammar errors. The people who made the picture do. And then we have townships, which are these squares right here that have about 36 sections for this image as 36 sections. Uh, and then those lines kind of that aren't the baseline, these horizontal lines are called township lines and these vertical lines are range lines. And then different, oh, no, sorry, and different townships are different distances. In this picture, it is six miles. Uh, they could be 10 miles, 15 miles, 20 miles, one mile, depends on the area. Uh, but these all correspond to this grid system. So they could say, go in uh, this square right here, like T1N, R1E. So go in township 2 or and range 1. I don't know what these stand for. I'm just assuming. Uh, so stuff like that. And then we got long loss, which is basically a system that corresponds, corresponds land to a river. So we have... Uh, you know, different little boxes of areas around here on this map. It's not township and range because we see some lines that don't correspond to latitude longitudes like these ones right here. So uh, they correspond to a river. So they could say go down south to the river or go to the beginning of the river or go to this bridge at the river. You're kind of basically basing everything at a river. So settlement may be along this river and say, all right, go up the river and you'll find this store or this house or whatever. Uh, and we'll primarily see these in our rural areas. Uh, you'll probably see this more than your less developed countries as well, or your small towns in your developed countries. Uh, but yeah, that's long lots. It's pretty, pretty simple. Um, yeah, long lots. Alright, that's the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys want to learn something new or teach other people new things, join my Discord server. The link's in the description. Right around 300 members at the time of recording this video. If you want to add to it, go ahead and join. Subscribe, it's free. You can change your mind if you don't like my content later on, but I'm sure you will. Like the video, it helps me out. Leave a comment with your criticism or feedback, or if you like the video, I really do appreciate it. I got nothing else for y'all. So if you guys want to see more AP Human Geography videos, cards above the video. If you guys want to watch more of them, see ya!